Okay, the next step in building our PC is going to be putting the motherboard in. But the first thing we're going to do before we actually put the motherboard in is we're going to go ahead and we need to get our input output shield and mount it in here. And we're going to go ahead and put that in now. This is our input output shield. Go ahead and open that up. Be careful here because a lot of these parts are sharp. So the way we're going to put this input output shield in is we're going to want to make sure that basically you're always going to want to look for your mouse and your keyboard connectors. Those are always going to go towards the top of the case. Easiest way to actually do it. The IO shield is always going to go in from the inside. You're going to line it up and you're just going to line up the bottom and the top. Just line it up and then you're simply going to push on it. until it snaps into place. So just basically push on each corner until you hear it snap into place, being careful that you don't push on any sharp pieces of metal to get that in. Once it snaps all the way in, that is not snapped in over here. You want to go ahead and push in from all four corners, like I say, until it snaps into place. Push in on all four corners here. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. And you'll see that when you push in on all four corners, it'll snap into place just like that. And you should be able to see these ridges right here of the input output shield on the back of your case. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and look at the holes on the inside of your case. These holes are where your motherboard are going to mount. Sometimes they already have built in standoffs, sometimes they don't. Like this one right here was built into the case. Probably because all motherboards have a uh, not the uh, screw that goes in there to hold it in. So we're going to go ahead and find our standoffs here in our bag that came with our motherboard. Here is our standoffs. We're going to need to align these with the holes on the motherboard. Right here and right here. You'll want to line those holes up with the back of the case and put standoffs in those locations. Grab a hold of it just by the CPU fan. You can do that. And if you want to go ahead and put it in to see how it lines up. Okay. I'll see that I need standoffs down here, standoffs down here. So I need four down at the bottom. And then One more at the top. So you'll go ahead and put those standoffs in the holes that you marked. You want to make sure you don't put standoffs in holes that aren't going to be used by the motherboard because the standoffs could rub up against the back of the motherboard and cause a short, and you definitely don't want to have a short in your motherboard. That's not good. All right, once you get all the standoffs in uh, and inserted, you'll wanna go ahead and put your motherboard back in. You'll wanna go ahead and push it against the springs of your input output shield. And so that they line up, you may have to adjust some of the 
oops you may have to adjust some of these little springs a little bit so that it goes in and it lines up with the holes it's a little bit tricky sometimes whatever you do be careful with the input output shield um, or it can really easily cut you so this is where your screwdriver that's a magnetic screwdriver is going to come in handy because you'll see that on your little screws that go in your motherboard with a magnetic screwdriver that screw is going to stay on there and allow you to go ahead and get it in there without dropping it all over the place definitely comes in handy so you'll want to hold your screwdriver in and you'll want to work in opposite corners again don't tighten anything up too tight first just get it started and then get another little screw and put it in the opposite corner Again, we're just looking at starting it first and you want to go ahead and repeat that for all the screws on this particular motherboard there's only six some of the bigger motherboards uh, that are AT, ATX motherboards are uh, regular not many motherboards might have as many as nine uh, or more screws At this point you can go ahead and start tightening all the screws up mainly once you get the four corners done and they're all lined up you'll be fine Now we're going to go ahead and tighten these screws up. You don't want to put too much force on these. Um, it's not super important that you get them super tight. And with a screwdriver like this, you have a lot of leverage. The last thing you want to do is strip these screws out. Um, when it starts getting tight, you'll only want to go about another fourth of a turn, another half of a turn once you start getting uh, snug. So just be really careful you don't strip out your motherboard screws can make it really difficult to get that motherboard out if you ever need to replace it. So now that our motherboard's in place, it's time to go ahead and unbundle the power supply, get that done, but we're gonna go ahead and get other components installed first. And that would be our DVD drive. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in now. For that, we're gonna go ahead and tip our case back up, right side up. Now for this, you're just going to go ahead and push this out from the inside. And we saw that this just pops right out. And your DVD drive will slide right in from the outside. Once you get that in, you're going to want to go ahead and square that up so it looks flush, just like that, so it's even. Get rid of this. And when you get that even, you'll see that you have your holes lined up. The screws that you had with your case should actually fit those. So we'll go ahead and put 
put two screws in here for our drive. Ultimately, you can go ahead and take the back cover off and insert two more screws on the other side to make sure it's not going anywhere. And you would have the other side off anyway if you had a more expensive case and you were going to run cables back behind the, the uh, motherboard area to uh, cable management. This uh, case does not have any cable management area back on the other side. So we're not gonna worry about that here. Um, you can see that our DVD drive is very secure just with the two screws. So we're not gonna worry about that, especially for this video. With this uh, piece of plastic here, you might wanna go ahead and keep that just in case you ever decide uh, to do something else up here. You'll always have it and can put it right back on. Okay. The next thing we'll wanna go ahead and install is our hard drive. And so we'll go ahead and take it out of the packaging. Again, when you hold your hard drive, make sure you take it out. Hold it by the edges. You don't want to touch any of these internal parts here or the gold leads that it connects to. So we're going to go ahead and mount this hard drive in now. Inside this case, it looks like they have a couple of sections for drives like this. We'll go ahead and mount it in the top one there. You can see what's going on there. Now once you get it in, see that you can slide it, slide those holes uh, wherever you need to have them. And again, you're gonna wanna insert screws to hold those in place. All right, let's go ahead and while we're at it, let's go ahead and flip this case around. Let's go ahead and take off the back. Go ahead and take off the other side and put screws on the other side anyway. This comes off really quick. I mean, it's only two screws, so not a huge deal. This side of the case cover, now that the screws are removed, should come off just the same way. Pull it back, and it falls right off. And just put that right on top for now. And we're just gonna go ahead and insert more screws in the other side, uh, especially of our hard drive, because we don't want that hard drive moving around at all. Okay. While we're out of here, we can go ahead and insert more screws in the back of that DVD drive, DVD burner. Put that in place and no way to work any cables in the back. We're gonna go ahead and put this side back on. Put our screws back in. 